to Archer Adventures. If you're new here, my name is Jade Marie and every year since I was 23 years old, I've done these series of videos that I call Me At to just kind of document that year of my life, what my interests are and sort of what my hopes and dreams are for the future. And um, this one's actually a little bit late. My birthday was actually back in September, so I turned 28 in September. It is now almost March, so I'm nearly six months late making this video. But that is because September was a really tough time for me and I will get onto that later on in this video, so do stay tuned. If you're new here, please do subscribe. We'd appreciate it a lot. And let's go on to the video. So my first question is, what is my favorite TV show? And my favorite TV show at the moment is the show This Is Us that is on Prime. I don't know if it's anywhere else, but I watch it on Prime. And I just love this because it gives a very real description of what life is like at different ages and how parts of our childhood affects our future and how our parents shaped us as people we are today. And it's one that I really like. I have recently started watching it with my partner again. Uh, so I haven't got around to the new season, so hopefully there's no spoilers in the comments. Um, but I am really excited to carry on watching them with him as what we've been doing is watching an episode and then actually to sort of taking it apart and talking about the characters and the development and how that makes us feel and how we feel about those characters. And so it's become this like really good um, sort of talking piece for us as well as just being an entertaining show on its own. The other series is that I've absolutely loved are Loki and WandaVision on Disney+. Plus. I'm a big Marvel fan, so is my daughter and I'm a partner because I've dragged him into it as well. Um, and they were just phenomenal. I loved watching WandaVision and just having to guess at the end of each episode what was going on. Don Lewis and I loved being little detectives and picking out all the clues as to what might be actually happening in that series. And I'm really sad that they won't be able to do a series like that again because it was definitely one of the best ones I've ever seen. So even if you don't like Marvel, I'd go and watch it, although you're not really going to understand as much. But it was a really great show and I would thoroughly recommend it to anyone who is familiar with the Marvel series. And the other series that I've really enjoyed is Living With Myself. Um, it's a concept of this guy that becomes gets a clone of himself and then they meet and they're trying to just like struggle with the life and how they're going to live it when they're both the technically the same person and I just find it really interesting and I'm hoping that there's a season two at the moment there's only a season one but it's one that I've definitely really been enjoying do comment below what your favorite tv show is I don't actually watch that much tv though I tend to stick more towards movies and I like going to the cinema and watching them there so I don't really know that much about tv series although I have recently been watching Cobra Kai I actually hadn't seen um the Karate Kid movies so I'm a little lost in what's going on in some parts but it's a really good show. Question number two is what is my favourite movie and without a doubt it's the new Spider-Man No Way Home. I've loved the Tom Holland series, I loved the past series with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield and being able to then share that love that I had as a child for these films now with my daughter in her childhood has been amazing. I love taking them to the cinema and watching her just get so excited things that I also got excited over because of how it affected my childhood. So it's been amazing to get to share that with her. And I really hope that there's some more Spider-Men. I know that they normally only do about three films. So hopefully we get more Tom Holland Spider-Man. But if not, I don't see me ever stopping and watching those movies. I just love them to pieces. They're my favorite ones for sure. Question number three are what my favorite songs. And my favorite songs as a 27 year old have been Three Nights, Rapper's Delight, which is an old favorite of mine. It's that one song that I can play and it just puts me in a great mood. It gets me up and wanting to do things. And the other song that I'm absolutely in love with is When It Rains, It Pours by Luke Combs. I recently got into country music, which is now my favorite genre. My favorite genre used to be rap, so it's quite a change. Um, but I think that that's kind of got to do with the fact that one, I am getting older and two, I have a child. So I've spent a lot of time having to listen to child friendly songs, which meant that playing rap out loud was no longer an option and I don't really stay up late enough to listen to music anymore over the headphones like I used to. So I've just kind of moved on to genres that we could both enjoy. And for us, that's been country. We both really thoroughly enjoy listening to country music and we're on road trips. We're always belting out in the car, much to my partner's dismay because he has to listen to us both very terribly sing for very long periods of time. Question number four is who are my favorite artists in terms of singers, um, which would be Ali Gacy, Luke Combs, Alec Benjamin, and Kane Brown. So two of those are country singers and I really have gone to country. Most of the music that I listen to now is country. I'm having a whole playlist just of country songs because I will just have that on repeat, um, which I might leave in the description if it's something that you'd like to listen to and try some new music out because I know that I get a bit stuck in my ways. Once I find music that I really like, I'll just play the same songs over and over again instead of actually trying to find new music. I don't really listen to the radio. So the way that I find out new music is either I'll hear it in a video or a movie, or I will say to the Alexa, hey, play this new 
worried I triggered her then. <laughs> But I tend to ask, you know, just play new music in this genre or something like that, or top charts. Very rarely, I don't really listen to the chart music. And that's sort of how I've discovered new music and how I came to like country music, which was a very big change for me. It's not something I really listened to before, but I definitely enjoy it now. And I just find it very peaceful. They're songs that I can sing along to and have fun. And they just put me in a good mood a lot of the time. Um, so yeah. Question number five are what are my bucket list items? I have written them down. So if I look up and down, that will be why, so sorry. Um, but my biggest bucket list item at the moment is to go to Venice. Dormois has actually been doing Italian lessons from home. She started those while she was shielding and she's working a grade above where she should have been. So she did a test and ended up passing for a grade higher than her age group, if that makes sense. So she's really, really thoroughly enjoyed learning it. It's something that she's really enjoying and taking a lot of interest in. So my dream is to take her to Venice where she'll actually get to use that language and with Venice being a fairly small area, it's something that we'd be able to do without having to worry about her wheelchair. Yeah. My other massive bucket list item is to own a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. This has been a dream of mine for years now. I still haven't got one. Um, I've always wanted a dog. Dawn Louise has always wanted a dog, but she spends so much time in hospital, it wouldn't have been fair to have got one. Um, however, now things are slightly easing. She's getting older and we do still get ambulances, but not to the same extent that we used to. We are not in the hospital for quite as long as we used to be. And at the moment she's not looking at any surgeries. So hopefully we'll be able to get a dog. It just depends on when that's gonna be something that we can afford to do. The next thing I recommend list is going and seeing the pandas. So in Scotland, which is very far away from where I am, it's right at the other end of the country. Um, they have pandas in Edinburgh Zoo. And unfortunately these are going to be going back to China in 2023. So I have a very, very little window to actually go and take Dawn Louise to see the pandas. Now, if you've been around on this channel for a while, you know that when she made the wish trip choices, one of those choices was to see the pandas. So if she didn't get to go to Florida like we did, that would have been her next wish. We are a family that are big animal lovers and we both really want to see the pandas. See not only my own wish for it to be fulfilled, but to see Dawn Louise's face when she gets to see pandas in real life, it would just make it that much more special. So I'm really hoping that before 2023, we will get to go to Scotland and see the pandas. It's definitely top of the bucket list to do like as soon as possible. Bucket list item is to have a house. Not so much because I don't enjoy living in the flat that we live in. It's more so because of Dawn Louise's needs. Um, we do have a garden, but we have to share it with our neighbours, which poses a lot of problems, especially through the COVID pandemic. It meant that we weren't allowed to go out there while she was shielding because they would obviously be able to go out there as well. So just having that outdoor space that's personal to her that she can go outside in, even on the days when she's really tired and we can't go for walks or days out, she could just go in there and have some time to be outdoors in the fresh air. That's the reason that I want a house. So I'm hoping that one day I'll be able to give that to her, especially as she's getting older because her heart is struggling more as she ages, um, as her body's obviously outgrowing her condition, basically. Another bucket list item that I have wanted for a very long time is to be able to get into a course for dog grooming because I would love to own my own dog grooming business one day. However, with Dawn Louise's needs and me being a full-time carer, it hasn't been a possibility yet, but I do try and look at opportunities like volunteering and things like that to try and better those chances. Another thing that I would absolutely love to do is take Dawn Louise back to Disney World. It is the happiest and healthiest I have ever seen her over there. And we've got some really good friends over there that we've had for years now. And it would just be incredible to be able to go back and see them all again. Even if we couldn't get into Disney, just to go and actually spend time with our friends in America would just be as amazing. Two other places that I'm absolutely dying to go are Tokyo, Canada. We actually have friends in Canada that we've watched grow up over FaceTime. Um, they're another heart family, so we've watched them grow up and it would just be lovely to actually meet them in person now. It's been a very long time and also Canada has just absolutely beautiful places to visit and a lot of different things to do, especially animal related. I know that you can take horse ride backs, bears in the forest, all that. It would just be amazing to go and see. Thing on my bucket list currently is to stay at Forest Holidays. This is something I've wanted to do for a long time. It's basically a cabin out in the woods, but you can get in-house massages, there's uh, fireplaces, hot tubs, and it's just really kind of bougie camping. Um, but it's something that I've always wanted to do. I love being in the outdoors, I love being around trees, and that is just something I would absolutely love to do and just kind of take away from the busyness. I live in a very busy city, so everyone's always on the go. It's always very loud. It'd be nice to just kind of be a bit recluse and uh, experience quieter nature side of things. Question six is what are some big things that have happened in my life this year? So I think the one of the biggest things that I had was that I actually started watching Twitch during shielding and I've made some lifelong friends through it. And it was just really something there that helped me make it through shielding. I had a little community to go to in the evenings when it got really quiet. 
and I didn't really feel so alone. So I'm really thankful for the people that I met throughout that period when I started watching Twitch streams and just the fact that I can actually call them friends now is even more amazing because they're really lovely people. Uh, another big thing that happened was obviously COVID happened and we were put into shielding because my daughter is high risk and considered vulnerable. And uh, this was really hard for us. We were in the flat for almost two years and we were struggling with a lot of things from just being able to get food in the house, having to pay for the food when we constantly had to use things like Uber Eats because there was no delivery slots left and trying to get clothes and things like that when we couldn't leave the house and dealing with Dormoise's mental health when we were trapped inside for the first time. We'd always been a very outgoing family. During winter, we'd be stuck inside for quite a while because of her health. But for the rest of the year, we were always outgoing places. We were always doing things, even if it was just a trip to the park. So having no choice but to stay in a flat for that length of time really, really was a hard time for us. And I'm really thankful that we're coming out of that, but we are both still dealing with the effects of being in there for so long. And another thing that was a really big change for me was actually saying goodbye to somebody. I never thought that I would, a lifelong friend of mine. Um, and it, it wasn't so much that we actually took the time to say goodbye, it was more that we drifted apart. I kept reaching out and it just didn't really work. And I think that that is just that we're in very different places in our lives now. We have been for a while. Um, obviously I've had a child and she has very severe medical needs which means that there is a massive lack of understanding in what I'm facing throughout the day. So it makes it hard to make those connections with people. And then on top of that, being in shielding and COVID and how obviously our concerns with our own lives were very different as well. So as sad as it is, I know that it's for the best to, to move on, but it's really hard to come to terms with things like losing people you never thought you'd say goodbye to, the people that you thought you would be around for a very long time. But I think at the end of it, as long as we're both happy, even if it doesn't mean that we are gonna carry on watching each other's lives unfold, then that's kind of what's the most important thing. And I wish them all the best. That You know, there's no bad blood or anything. It is just simply that we drifted apart. And that's what happens in life sometimes. Number seven are who are my favourite streamers? So I never really watched Twitch until Shielding. I was scrolling through my Twitter feed and someone who used to YouTube is now doing Twitch. So I clicked on their stream and it just led me down an absolute rabbit hole. I spent a lot of very late nights on their stream talking to them and had a right laugh. And then that progressed me into meeting other streamers as well, smaller streamers. And one of them I've actually become really great friends with. I'm really thankful for the people that I met through Twitch, like I said, because they really did help me get through Shielding. So the three streamers that I'd like to give a little mention to are Warwick Zero, Kikonix, and Teclanor. I'll drop some links in the description. You have to go check them out. They're absolutely lovely and hilarious people. And it's really great to see them doing well. And I'd love it if you go check them out too. And you might occasionally catch me playing games with them, depending on if I have the time, because since coming out of Shielding, life has been really busy, which is why I haven't been able to make this video until now. It's just been crazy. I've had a few little health hiccups along the way. Dawnie went back to school. We came out with shielding, hospital appointments. It just, everything just took off from September and I have had no time to do anything really. Um, the vlogs that we have been doing um, have been great, but ones like this where I have to sit down and really dedicate a bit of time at home to them is a little bit harder for me to do than the ones while they're out of the house and doing things like that Life is what are my obsessions so not so much now because again life has really taken off and i've been very busy but um over the course of becoming 27 i became very addicted to the game among us i'm sure that most of you have we did some streams on the channel that you can go back and watch another one is animal crossing so i was very addicted to animal crossing with dormoise for quite a while but i haven't played it in months now but it's one of those games that you can always go back to it's just a bit overwhelming for me when I've got nothing to do and there's a whole list of chores on that game. The other obsession that I have is Mario Kart. Now I've loved Mario Kart since like GameCube, oh no, Game Boy actually, a lot longer ago. And Dormies loves it too. So we spend a lot of our free time playing Mario Kart with friends online and that's really fun. I'm so excited for the new tracks finally coming out because these tracks have been worn out by us quite a lot now and I'm excited to play those with the streamer friends as well. Another obsession of mine is Tropical Mango Candy Kittens. They're my favourite sweet now. They are the most amazing sweets that I've had. They are my absolute favourites. And anytime I'm on Amazon, I'll end up grabbing a packet. 
as well because they're like a pound each and i've never actually seen them in the shops i've only seen them on amazon so i discovered those and haven't looked back since another obsession that i have is hello fresh so we tried this out during shielding and i loved it it just made life so much easier the only problem is the cost so it's not something that we're going to do long term but in like the summer holidays and things when Donnelly's and i have time to cook together i really would like to try them out again it was a lot of fun just trying new recipes and having it all laid out simply for us as well because i'm not a great cook i'm learning but I'm not a great cook. <laughs> and my last obsession is rats. I don't know why, but I really, really, really want rats. I've become slightly obsessed with these things and I've been doing a lot of research. I don't feel like I'm ready to own one yet as one, the cage size, and two, I don't think I quite know enough about them to actually have them yet, but it's definitely something that I'm looking into. I did have gerbils growing up, so I'm kind of used to having like rodents. I've had rabbits as well, um, but I've never had a rat before and I've never known someone who has a rat before so I'm definitely waiting, biding my time to actually go and purchase one. I want to make sure that I'm completely ready for that stage of things. So yeah. What are nine things I have learnt this year? So I think that I've learnt a lot this year. Some of it's a little bit too personal that I won't be talking about. Um, but I really have learnt that there are people out there that genuinely want to help and will treat you right which is something I've always struggled with because I haven't had the best past and there's a lot of things that I'm still working through, a lot of things that are still very painful for me to sort of face and open up about. Um, so actually finding out that there's people out there that genuinely just want to help and be there for you has been a really big step for me. And the fact that I'm able to actually open up to people at all these days is, is even more so because for a long time I've been very shut off to a lot of people I feel so yeah I don't I don't really know I don't really feel like there's too much that I want to talk about that on here however I will say that if you're someone who has always felt very alone has always felt like you have to do everything on your own and that the only person that has your back is yourself I've been there for a very, very long time and I'm only now learning that that is not the case. And I have finally found people that are genuinely there for me when I need them. And I'm very, very thankful for those people and the fact that they are in my life now. And they obviously know who they are and I tell them more than enough why they are so important to me. But for those people who, like me, have felt like you've got to struggle with the whole world on your shoulders by yourself, I really hope that you find people that make you feel like you don't need to fight on your own anymore because it really is life changing when you finally realise there's people who you can lean on and will genuinely mean it when they say they're there for you. So I've kind of already touched on this but the other thing that I learned is just kind of about letting go. Letting go of people that you thought you wouldn't have to doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing. It can just be you're growing up, you're living different lives and you can wish the best for them but also protect yourself and kind of step away from constantly chasing something that just isn't working anymore. And the last thing would be losing Lola. For anyone who is new to the channel and doesn't know who Lola is, she was our pet rabbit. We had her for eight years, which is a very, very long time. And she was a massive part of our lives. And losing her was very, very painful for Dawn Louise and I. It was the first time Dawn Louise had lost a pet that she could remember. I had another rabbit before her that lived till nine years old when Dawn Louise was two. And I thought that her death was probably the hardest I'd go through. And I thought that was it, I was done with the rabbits. But then my Lola was bought for me as a birthday present a couple of months later because I'd always had rabbits and they, th they thought that it would help. And it did for a very long time. But losing Lola and I, it really has just been that sort of tipping point for me. I won't be having any more rabbits. I've had them my whole life and it feels very sad to say that I won't be having any anymore because I feel like I am a bunny mum. <laughs> I'm just, I feel like I'm meant to have rabbits um, or dogs, <laughs> but I've always had rabbits and it's been a huge part of my life. And it definitely feels weird not having a pet. We haven't had a pet now for a little while. Um, she passed away in 2020. So coming up on two years this year and yeah, it's, it's been really weird to not have a pet. This is the first time in my life that I've ever gone without a pet for this long. But I'm just not ready to have another one yet. And I think until the day comes that we get a dog, we probably won't. And that is 
kind of a hard choice to be honest because I am very much an animal lover. I love being around animals, they do make me very happy. So not having one at home is a bit weird for me, really. Question number 10 is what are some things I wish I had done? So I've been doing sort of a lot of reflection. Um, I'm not really sure why, I've just been very in my head, sort of thinking back to times and things that I wish I had done and some of the things that really and some of the things that really stood out for me is taking photos of myself and videos. Now obviously I started this channel when I was around 23, 22, something like that. I, before that, didn't really have any photos or videos of myself. I'd take the odd selfie with Dawn Louise or with friends, but I didn't really have anything else. I didn't really have any like candid moments or anything like that. And one of the things that I'm really upset about is that I don't have more photos and videos with Dawn Louise of us not in like staged positions but out doing things. I wish that someone had been there and taken photos and videos of us when she was younger. And now that she's older, we are getting those uh, moments caught on camera and for YouTube, it's been really nice, but also it's made me long for the moments that are long past now and won't be coming back. So if you have young children and you're a mum, just find a way to film yourself with them as well, even when you're like really stressed out because one of the things that I have always done with Donna Louise is like dancing around the lounge with her and it went from me dancing with her on my arms to then on my hip to then on my feet and now she dances around just like I do and it's just crazy that she's grown up so fast and I wish that I had those moments of us together when she was younger on camera so I could show her one day. Um, I also wish I took more videos and photos when I was younger but I didn't really have the right kind of cameras and stuff for it to be honest I didn't have great quality stuff when I was much much younger um but my granddad passed away over a decade ago now and I don't have any videos of him and that's been something that I struggled with for a very long time and it kind of occurred to me recently that Dawn Louise doesn't have any videos of her with her mum really when she was younger we ha might have like one or two uh, but they're very very short you can't really see me in them because I've always been in the background I've always been the one taking the photos and videos so my advice <laughs> if anyone would like to listen to it is if you have a woman in your life be it the mother of your kids or you know your parents or something like that go and take photos of them and videos because I know it's very common these days that mothers will take all the videos of their kids with everyone else but no one ever returns the favour so we're always the ones behind the camera and we miss out on having those memories captured so if you know someone in your family that doesn't really have that go and be that for them because i bet you they'd really appreciate it one day even if they're proper shy another thing that i really wish i had done was to do more things by myself however this is kind of a hindsight moment because there is a reason that I wasn't doing things alone and that's because I had very severe anxiety when I was much younger. I was in therapy for it till I was about 19 years old. So it's not something I would have gone out and done, but it is something that I really wish I could have. I feel like I have lost a lot of my life between being a full-time carer and anxiety and depression. I didn't put myself out there really. I didn't go out and do things that I would have liked to so I'm just trying to get that back now and do all the things that I wish that I could have done when I was younger. I want to go out and I want to do things that I've never done before, I want to do weird things, silly things and just not care what people think anymore. I am so beyond past that. Now I just want to enjoy life as much as I can because I feel like the closer I get to 30 I'm realising that I'm getting kind of old <laughs> and I bet future me will look back and be like no you were so young then. Um, but I don't know I just feel like maybe because of shielding i've just had too much time to think about things and i realized i've not done a lot of the things that i wished that i could have done and i feel like the time's moving a lot faster now so there's a lot of things that i want to go out and do so i'm hoping that i will fulfill them very shortly <laughs> so the last two questions for this video are what i wish i was doing for my birthday so for my birthday this year i actually didn't do anything there was just too much going on and I didn't even get a cake to be honest because I completely forgot about it because there was just way too much going on for me to actually focus on doing anything for my birthday this year so I'm hoping next year will be the one. So the things that I wish that I could have done for my birthday are this thing called Wolf Watch which is a place that you can go in the UK and there's a place that you can stay there in which you would wake up and be able to hear all the wolves howling. There's like a little balcony and it's in the middle of the forest and 
I love dogs and wolves and things like that and other animals so it just seems like the perfect place to go and spend my birthday and just be surrounded by that and I would love to stay over so that I could wake up to howling wolves because that just seems really cool and if I couldn't do that there's also a lodge room which is kind of expensive at this place and I'm probably going to say this wrong called Port Lymph I'll leave the name here because I honestly don't know how you say it but they have a wolf lodge in which you can stay in a room and there's massive massive windows so you can wake up and they'll be like right at the window which is just insane i just i want to wake up to wolves basically that's the dream <laughs> and failing that the last thing that i would have liked to have done is a zookeeper now if you've watched my series of these videos you'll know that i say every year how i want to go and be a zookeeper for the day i still haven't done it i kept saying i do it for my next birthday i do it for my next now when it comes to dawn louise's birthday i'm very good always planned always got the money for it done my saving i've done my planning and i make things work but when it comes to my birthday i completely just throw everything out the window because i never end up doing the one thing that i want to do for my birthday however i have had some incredible birthdays so i'm not that upset about it so my favorite birthday in recent years was the one that i spent with sean i'll leave a little link up to it as well and that was my 27th birthday so when i turned 27 i was staying over with my friend Sean and they threw me a little birthday party with just our families really and they made me this amazing cavalier birthday cake got me a load of really cute gifts and I just had an amazing day going out and walking and just just chilling with them really and it was really really basic but it was like the perfect way to spend my birthday and it's gonna be going down as one of my favorites of all time so at the end of the day it's not what i plan but it was way better as well and the very last question for today's video is what do i hope to do this year so one of the things that i really want to do is travel i want to travel so badly and i don't mean abroad i just mean like around england just go and see new cities just pick random places on the map and go there and just see new things i don't really care if it's cool like it can just be like museums i don't care i just want to get out of the city and see other places and how they differ and things like that which is something that i haven't been able to because of don Louise's health and also the fact that we couldn't really leave the area in which her hospital was based at without having to do some serious planning in case things went wrong whereas now that she's a little bit more stable we can do that now I would also really love to have started a new hobby that I can stick with because I've got a bit of a bad habit of wanting to try everything which means that I very rarely stick at one thing because there's always something new to try so I'm hoping that I'll find a hobby that I can actually stick at and do maybe once a week if it's a thing outside the home or more regularly if it's something I'm going to be doing inside of the home I just really want a hobby that I like and enjoy for a prolonged period instead of constantly just trying new things and not really learning them because obviously I've not given myself long enough to. So that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about me. And if you have any more questions, you can drop them below and I can answer them in a future video. And yeah, you've only got seven months till I turn 29 and there's a me at 28 video. So get your questions ready, I guess. But thank you so much for watching. Please do subscribe if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.